Making sure your cosmetic products are safe for yourself and your customers is extremely important. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a simple test that you can do at home that can save you time, money, and those awkward customer conversations. So keep watching. Hi, if you're new to my channel, my name is Jenna, I run Revega. I'm a self-taught cosmetic formulator and I teach people how to do the same at home and grow their small cosmetic businesses. Today's video is a collab with dipslides.com who very kindly sent me some products of theirs that I'd been eyeing up for quite some time um, as I've really wanted to show you these. So let's open the box together. So this came the other day, I've been patiently waiting to open it until I recorded this video. Um, so let me grab some scissors and we'll see what they've sent me. So I can see already I've got loads of swabs. These are sterile um, so that you can uh, dab your products onto the dip slides rather than having to put the dip slides onto your product. Um, it just makes it a much more clean um, process. So that's good, loads of those. And then I've got, what's this? A pH meter, brilliant. So this, uh, this measures uh, pH and temperature. So that will be really, really useful have a look. I think this measures liquids and lotions um, which is really handy. And there's the electrode. Brilliant. There is something else in the box. Let's see what it is. I think I can get it out. There we go. Oh cool, so it's a pH buffer solution, so I can calibrate the meter, so that's good. Brilliant, so I'll probably use that in a future video because I am going to do a video about pH at some point, so look out for that. Um, and then I'll go through how to use that in that video. Um, so for now, let's open, I think this is probably the incubator, so let's have a look. Right, so this box is, by the looks of it, uh, connectors and the power supply um, and plug for the incubator. So that all comes included. And then this should be the incubator unit. Cool. It's quite light, but brilliant. It won't uh, take up much space either. I've just got the two hole one because um, I won't be testing many products in one go. And what happens is they go in here and they'll incubate at a constant temperature um, so that you can do your microbial testing, which I'll show you shortly in this video. Um, but thank you, that's brilliant. And then obviously you've got the instructions, it tells you how to use it, very good. And then obviously if you've got an incubator, you need the dip slides to go in it. So let's see, we've got quite a few boxes of these. <laughs> this is really generous, thank you. So let's have a look. Cool. Gotta love lab equipment. Um, so these are the dip slides and you've got two different sides that I'll explain in a minute. Um, and that's where you'll put your a uh, swab of product and then these go in those holes in the incubator and then that's how you do your microbial testing. So I've got lots of these to play with, so that's great. And then in the back here, they've provided these charts so that you can do your counts. Um, so you've got one for each side of the test and we'll refer back to these later. And then uh, labels for all your swabs so you don't forget what they are. 
fantastic so thank you so much to dip slides for sending me these these are so 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 useful i do recommend them if you want to buy your own um, you can use the link that they've kindly given me um, it's down in the description below and it even gets you some money off um, so thank you for sponsoring this video um, and uh, let's get on with what they are and how to use them so what are crbs dip slides well as you'll be aware as a cosmetic maker especially if you're in the eu or the uk there are specific lab tests that a cosmetic product needs to go through in order to be considered safe for sale so all products need stability testing you can see my earlier video on that i've linked it below but all products containing water also need challenge testing challenge testing involves professional lab testing um, and what it does is it tests the efficacy of your preservative system and they also test for microbiological contamination. So you might use the CRBS dip slides to perform microbiological contamination test on a new product before sending it to the official lab for testing. So this saves you money on retesting as you know that your products are going to pass. It also ensures the safety of every single batch of your product before putting it on sale. CRBS dip slides are specifically designed to test for microbiological contamination in cosmetic products. Um, they're made from agar, a jelly type substance that in its simplest form is food for bacteria, yeasts and moulds. Um, by adding your product to it, you're providing any contamination in your product with food to eat. Um, as the contamination grows, bacteria and yeast will show up as a bump on the agar and for mould you'll usually see a fluffy disc shaped growth. The straw coloured agar on the CBRS slides is called the Trifone uh, Soya Agar, TSA. Um, TTC, uh, don't ask you to pronounce that, pronounce that uh, also known as red spot dye, is added to the TSA agar. When bacteria grow on the agar, the addition of the TTC causes this to be visible as red spots and this makes them much easier to count. Uh, the pink side is the rose bengal agar, uh, which has an antibiotic added to it. This helps to prevent the bacteria from growing on the rose bengal agar, as bacteria grow quicker than yeast and moulds. Without this, bacteria would grow and consume the agar before the yeasts and moulds could. Um, it's also one of the reasons why you should use two swabs per test. This avoids transferring the antibiotic onto the TSA side and in turn causing inaccurate bacterial results. These challenge tests must be done if your product contains water. However, they are expensive and if your product fails the tests, then you're back to reformulating and paying to test again. So this is where dip slides come in. CRBS dip slides are an affordable way to pre-test before sending for challenge testing. This is so that you know your product will pass first time. Whilst a challenge and microbiological test is only done and passed once by the lab, CRBS dip slides also allow you to test each batch before you put it on sale um, so that you can be sure that each and every batch of your product is free from contamination and safe for sale. Let's say for example I made a new hand cream. It passed stability tests, I then needed to send it for a challenge test. So I used my CRBS dip slides to ensure it was safe, then sent it to the lab knowing it would pass. It passes the challenge test first time, I get my CPSR, complete my PIF, upload my product to the cosmetics portal and then I'm selling it. All the above is done once. Then next time I make a batch, since each batch isn't challenge tested, I would test that batch to ensure the same level of safety is achieved. So this keeps a high standard of hygiene when making my cosmetics and it keeps my customers safe. It also alerts you to any contamination issues before selling so that you can check down the cause, whether that's an ingredient issue or a formulation issue. So now let's look at how to use dip slides. The following are the dip slide instructions. I am going to include these in the blog post that's linked below. Um, let's have a go at doing some dip slides now. First thing we need to do is set up the incubator unit. Um, so this comes with a UK plug. 
um, and then it has lots of adapters so that you can use it in any country. Um, these are the little adapters. Um, so you just fit that onto the UK socket and then you can plug it in wherever you live in the world, which is really handy. Um, so we're going to set that up now. So it's very simple. You just need to plug uh, this end into your incubator here and then obviously plug the rest into the mains. It's very low voltage, so it doesn't draw much power. Um, it just heats to around 30 degrees C on a constant temperature. Um, we need to wait for this light uh, to go out and then uh, sort of intermittently come on as it regulates the temperature. Um, they say to wait about 15 minutes before you begin using the unit. So I'm going to do that now. Once it's ready to use, you need to prepare your dip slides and your swabs. Um, so here's my dip slide for my first experiment. Uh, first thing you need to do is pop some gloves on um, because you want to make sure that you're doing this as cleanly as possible because you don't want to introduce any bacteria that's not in the experiment. Uh, so on with the gloves. <laughs> So I'm going to test this on two different things. Uh, the first one's going to be my control, uh, which is a um, professionally made hand cream, because um, I would assume that their uh, standards of hygiene are quite high and that a preservative is effective. Um, so that will be our control. And I'm just preparing my swabs here. What we want are two different sterile swabs. Um, because we want one from the, for the uh, yellow side and one for the pink side, uh, just so that we don't cross contaminate. And like I said earlier, we don't want that antibiotic being transferred over to, onto the other side. So take out your dip slide and then hold it using a handy little handle at the end. Take one of your swabs and your, the thing you're testing. So in my case, it's this cream and then just put your sterile swab into the thing you're testing move it around a little bit you don't need much and then all you want to do is wipe it onto one side of the dip slide and just a nice thin layer so that you can see through it this is so that when anything grows on it you'll easily be able to see it so just like that we're coating the CRBS dip slide and then put that swab back so it's ready to throw out. Then you want to turn your dip slide over and take your new sterile swab and again take some of the same cream and put it on the opposite side of the CRBS dip slide in the same way just a thin thin layer um, so that you'll be able to see any bacteria growth and that's all you do then pop your swab I like to put them back in the packaging and then those will go aside because I'll need to throw those away then you put your CRBS dip slide into the tube and then you want to label it so I've labelled it with the date, time, the test I'm doing and where that swab has come from. In hindsight, it's better to put the label a bit higher up or lower down so that you can see more of your slide in the casing, but you live and learn. The next one I'm doing is to purposely contaminate to show you what the bacteria and growth looks like. Um, so the best way to do this is if you have a pet um, you'd want to take a swab of uh, their food bowl or toy or something their saliva has got on. So here's our willing or unwilling donor. This is Picard. Um, he was a bit confused by the camera. Um, but what I've done is swab his food bowl with two sterile swabs. And then I'll be using one swab per side of my new dip slide, just like I did before. And hoping um, that his food bowl contains lots of lovely bacteria so that I can show you uh, what this looks like and compare it to hopefully very little or none uh, from the cream in 24 to 48 hours. 
So again, just rub that on the dip slide. It, obviously this is just a very thin coating again. Um, do it on both sides, use a different swab for each side, and then you can put it back in the tube, label it and pop it in your incubator. Now we'll check what these have done after 24 hours, um, but really the uh, bacteria should have fully formed after 48, so that's when we'll sort of take our reading for that. And then for the yeast and mould, we need to wait at least 120 hours. Um, so we'll check that in five, year, five days time for the final reading. Okay, it's been 24 hours and I'm quite excited to see what these look like. So let's test our, what I'm gonna call our control sample. This was our um, sample that came from a professionally made cream. So I wouldn't expect um, to see any awful results on that one. Um, and this came from the cat's food bowl. <laughs> so let's, we've definitely got some growth there. So this is the TTC red spot count. Um, now if we compare it to the sheet they've given us, now you wouldn't want any more uh, than to see that first column, uh, the 10 to on that one. Um, so obviously this is way above um, what it would be acceptable for cosmetics. <laughs> now on the pink side uh, for the yeast and moulds, we wouldn't expect these to be fully formed for about five days or 120 hours. Um, so we are going to leave it. I'm going to leave this in and check it off to 48 hours um, so that we can see the red spot count again then on both of them. Um, but then we're going to leave it uh, for the full 120 hours to let any uh, yeast and mould fully form if it's going to and then we'll take our final reading. Um, but so far so good, it's doing what's expected. So <laughs> um, that's great. It's now been 48 hours and we're gonna check our samples again. The control from the commercial cream still looks completely just the same as when I put it in. I can't see anything on either side of that yet. Um, so we'll leave that again. And then, oh dear, okay, the the cat bowl has obviously uh, got a bit worse. I don't know if it's just got bigger or if there's more there, um, but let's compare it to our chart again, see where it falls. Um, like I said, you, if you're doing cosmetics, which obviously this wouldn't be for, but if you were doing cosmetics, you wouldn't want it any higher than that first column, the 10 2. So obviously this is way worse. Um, yeah, interesting. Um, we've not got anything on the pink side yet, but it does take up to 120 hours for yeast and mould to form if it's going to. Um, so what I'll do is need to put this back and leave it for a further three days to make up to 120 hours. And then we'll check for yeast and mould then, uh, if there is any at all. Um, so you can see, that bacteria just fell somewhere between that second and third column, which is way too much. It's now been 120 hours, and if any mould was gonna form, then it would have formed by now, so we can happily end the experiment. Um, as you can see, the commercial sample, absolutely no bacteria or mould, which, to be honest, I'd expect <laughs> from this. Um, so if this was a cosmetic product that you were going to sell, you could be very happy that it would pass challenge testing. Um, the cat bowl, obviously there was a lot of bacteria there. <laughs> if that was a cosmetic, there would be no way it would pass challenge testing. Um, you would need to be reformulating that. Um, sadly, there's no mold growing. I kind of wanted to see it. Um, but I don't think it was uh, the right environment for, for lots of mould. It was just a fairly dry swab. Um, I may show you that at a later date. Um, but if there was any mould, it would have grown on the pink side by now. So now you can end your experiment and take your dip slides out and turn off your incubator. Um, and now we need to dispose of them properly. 
So to dispose of your CRBS dip slides, um, get some bleach or some disinfectant that kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria, um, and then just fill up uh, your uh, tube casing. Um, not all the way to the top because you'll see in a minute I overfilled a little bit and um, you don't want it to displace too much so probably about half full just over half full and then put your dip slide back in into the bleach so it's fully submersed and then do that for all of your dip slides and then what you're going to do is leave that for several hours just so it can kill off any bacteria or mold that has grown on your dip slides and then they're safe to throw away as normal. If you do get um, hazardous waste collections for your business um, then obviously do this and you can put it in there um, if you like just to be safe. And that's it for our dip slide uh, experiment. I hope that was helpful to some of you. It will help you pass challenge testing a lot easier, so I do recommend getting some. If you go to the link uh, below for dip slides, um, they have kindly given you a discount. You can use discount code Revega to get yourself 10% off. Um, use the link to view all the cosmetic uh, dip slides and incubators. Um, they also give you this handy Excel download so that you can record all of your experiments nice and easily. That's free when you order um, on their website. Um, and uh, if you have any questions about these dip slides, then they're more than happy to answer any questions via email or you can leave a comment below. If you haven't already, I recommend you check out my video on stability testing and uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.